The Tour Championship is here. Scotty Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, Rory McIlroy, Victor Hovland, all the biggest names in golf descend upon Eastlake to decide the 2024 Tour Championship winner. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm Andy Lang from wagertalk.com, being joined, as always, by my fellow golf betting analyst, Nick Borman. Um, Nick, we got to start talking about the course right off the bat, East Lake golf club and this is just not going to be the same east lake golf cl uh golf club that we've seen in years past and uh you got to kind of realize it i don't know how much it's going to affect the handicapping but we'll uh we'll discuss that so it's going to play at a par 71 at 7490 yards roughly this course was completely redesigned um i found it interesting that they said we went backwards to look forward we went back to the kind of 1949 style of the course to make some of the changes um for me the biggest things are the ones you're not really going to be able to see it's just the grass uh, the grass and the fairways are going to be different it's probably going to cause the ball to roll more which means you could have longer drives or you could have some more runoff into the rough. Uh, the greens are going to putt probably a little bit different. They said they wanted to make them faster. So we could see some different pace on these greens. Um, I wonder how guys like Xander Shoffley and, you know, Victor Hovland from, from last year, I wonder how they're going to react uh, to this to this kind of new style of, of course. Um, we've changed one par four. We've added about 60 yards, made that a par five, some of the greens that they redid are just bigger now. So you're probably going to see a little bit tick up in greens and regulation, but it does not mean it's going to mean more birdie opportunities. Um, there's going to be some really big greens where, yeah, technically you may hit it, but you may have a really, really long putt uh, just to try and um, lag it up there. It's going to be hot, very hot <laughs> down there. Um, so what's your take on this new course here, here Nick? Um, I mean, we're all kind of guessing if it affects guys or if it doesn't. What's your take? Yeah, I mean, that's really all we are doing. And, and listen, you have to use something as kind of your starting point. So historically speaking, looking at results of past performances at East, like I still think is important. You know, a lot of the holes, while bunkers have been moved, trees have been removed, um, greens obviously resurfaced and, and undulations and stuff reworked. The overall layout to the eye, you know, the way the, the whole – turns and shapes still is there for the most part. So there's a comfortable comfortability level. I think that still exists for guys like you mentioned Xander, who's never finished worse than seventh year and seven starts. Um, so you, you expect that, that he'll still feel comfortable, but, but, but the putting greens will cause him a little bit more trouble than in the past. He's not going to know every little break and nuance like he used to. And that does help level the playing field. In fact, Andy, last week, if you recall, when we were talking about the BMW, one of the things I mentioned about the new course, uh, that they played last week was that unknown putting surfaces tend to help the poor putter. And the result of the tournament was exactly that. You know, Keegan Bradley lost minus 1.69 strokes putting last week and won. That's how good he was, TD Green. And I think it's true again this week where, yeah, if you make a lot of putts and you're hitting the ball well, you're probably going to win. But you can probably hide some poor putting just if you're really good TD Green this week, just because people are going to, you know, the comfortable knowing exactly every little break and where to put every single ball is not going to be there for these guys. So I do think it helps a little bit to level the playing field there. Um, you know, the starting strokes obviously is a huge factor when it comes to, to, to finishes and a guy like Xander starting off second place and, you know, so much ahead of the field on everybody else. It's, it's, uh, it can be hard to, to catch. Same with Scotty, obviously. So, uh, but I do think, you know, T to green historically has been the kind of metric to pay attention to at East Lake. I see no reason to think that's not going to be important again this week. Uh, we talked, you know, the overall length of the course is pretty long, just shy of 7,500 yards, par 71 now, as you mentioned, that uh, par four converted into a par five, 60 extra yards. So a little unknown, a little, uh, I guess, maybe not as 100% confident in past results to dictate future <laughs> results this week, but I do think it's still an important metric. And guys that have played well here in the past, there should still be a decent correlation. You just might not see them sink as many putts uh, around the 72 holes that are playing this week. But last thing I'll mention, uh, off the course, you talked about the weather. Yeah, very Atlanta-like this week. Hot, humid, small chance of thunderstorms any given afternoon. But even if there's a delay, there's only 30 people in the field, so it won't really throw off the schedule. But when betting this week and you're looking at outrights, and I'm waiting for leaderboard markets to come out, just remember you can bet both with starting strokes and without, obviously, with starting strokes kind of limits your ability to pick, predict the winner, and your odds are going to be very, very low. Uh, last year, I was able to cash 
the without starting strokes number on Xander, who's now cashed that bet twice. He's won without starting strokes. So keep that in mind this week. And oddly enough, that market, <laughs> you're betting to win. You could actually have a dead heat rule tie uh, in that situation too, because I'm not going to play off if those guys aren't, aren't winning the tournament. So keep that in mind as well. But I am looking forward to this final week. I can't believe there's a little tear, Andy. The season's over. But for us crazy golf bettors, that just means one week off and then we're right back into it because that's the season break. <laughs> yeah, the, the Sanderson farm isn't going to break down itself. Um, so uh, we'll be here, <laughs> for, we'll be here for, for, for these fall tournaments. Um, yeah, so just a couple quick little tips on um, some of the betting things. Nick mentioned you got to understand the, the betting markets. Um, if you're betting outright winners, does that include the strokes or does that not include the strokes? When you're looking at the round finishing position, like, you know, you're looking at some of these numbers on top 20, you know, including ties. And I was looking at some of these guys and I was like, wow, that's a really good price on top 20. There's only 30 guys in the field. And I was like, oh, yeah, but that guy's like starting six shots back from the leaders, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, just I'll just read the strokes here real quick here. So Scotty Shuffler is going to start 10 under. Xander's at eight under. Hideki's at seven under. Keegan Bradley's at six under. Keegan Bradley's going to start at six under, Nick. Unbelievable. Uh, he jumps uh, Ludwig Bear. He's going to start five under. At four under, you've got your Roy McIlroy, Colin Morikawa, Wyndham Clark, Sam Burns, and Patrick Cantlay. I mean, seriously, outside of Sam Burns, could we just call that the disappointing group? Like the letdown group? <laughs> I mean, Roy McIlroy, Colin Morikawa, like Patrick Cantlay. Man, that's a, <laughs> that's a rough group. Yeah, they're going to bring four, Burns right? down. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so, and then just below that, you got three under at Sung JM, Thigala, Lowry, Adam Scott, Tony Finau. So make sure you understand um, where the strokes are and how they start off with. And uh, the other uh, little cat uh, category I wanted to mention was, Nick, you and I have done a lot with the individual round scores. You got to understand last year, if you're looking at last year's score, that was a par 70, it's par 71. So, you know, for example, Xander Shoffley shot, shot 67 in the first round last year. Well, that was three under. If he does that again this year, it's it's four under. So make sure you 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 know the differences in the scores. Um, and like we said, you know, they got a par four, added a little bit, made it a par five. So I got to believe that's got to help the overall average scoring with the field. So uh, if you guys could, please hit the like button. Leave us a comment below. It's last uh, last uh, tournament of the season, guys. So let us know who you think's going to take it home. I mean, obviously these guys – with the lead on paper looks like a good looks like a good bet but traditionally they haven't really brought it home the guys in the lead uh, just you know like one hole nick you can all of a sudden your lead's gone and then it just becomes yeah. you know even match play so it's it's pretty interesting so guys if you could uh, really helps the algorithm out if you hit the like button and leave a comment below it's been an absolutely fantastic season uh, the comment section has been just fit just great like one of the best years probably the best year since dick and i've been doing tea time in the comment section so uh don't be a stranger say hi down there and don't forget to subscribe to the uh youtube uh channel for wager talk it's college football and nfl season and we have got tons i mean tons of content individual game breakdowns we've got props we've got bet on it that is now back for college football and nfl so anything you need to help get you ready to turn a profit uh, for college football, NFL, we've got you covered. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Nick, let's get into the uh, total strokes gained here. So obviously, it's just going to be the the biggest names here. So let's just take a look uh, and see who we got here and if there's anything we can take away for this week. Yeah, I mean, this was pretty much copy and paste from last week. Um, <laughs> but not a, lot, not a lot of change in the 12-month window of starting strokes. And again, no surprises. You can see who's way out in front scotty and xander just so much better than the rest of the field as far as their uh long term short term medium term whatever term you want to look at play with those guys so pretty pretty impressive uh and the rest of the the rest of the list here nothing sticks out crazily the one absence name on here is the guy starting in fourth position at 600 is keegan who was made the cut uh well made the field on the number of 50 last week but now is in the fourth position after that win so he doesn't fall into the into the top 10 over the last 12 months uh, as everybody else you can see in the top five does you got scotty at 10 xander at eight ludwig at five hideki at seven but keegan is there at six he's just not on this graphic because of that i guess i could have put him in the notables but even in the short term even in the in the in the strokes game last three months he's not in the top 10 
Um, but golf is a fickle sport. On Tuesday, there was a pro am leading up to last week. Uh, I don't know if you saw that interview about but from Keegan. They're asking him like, you know, out all of a sudden you get <laughs> get hot. He's like, uh, I figured something out. Basically, on Tuesday in the pro am, I shot sixty two. <laughs> I figured it out, and he stuck through it. That just sounds like the rest of us when we're golfing. You make one good hole, and you're like, I just figured it out, and then you get immediately suck the next hole. But he carried it on, and he 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 carried it all the way through the tournament. So good for him. Uh, but not a lot of surprises here. You got a guy. I'm really, I guess. I don't know what to make of Hideki Matsuyama withdrawing last week. There's a part of me that, you know, wants to believe that he's not injured at all because that's what I'm hoping for. He's been playing. He's played so well short term. I know he's had back injuries, so there's always that realization that maybe indeed it is. But he had nothing to lose or nothing to gain last week. He wasn't going to go. He wasn't going to catch Scotty or Xander. And as he did, he withdrew and he didn't lose any position. So I kind of wonder if he figured that out. I was like, you know what? Screw walking up and down this giant elevation course and wearing myself out this week i'm gonna get out <laughs> rest up maybe not maybe i'm overthinking it but there's a part of me that's like eh, i don't know about hideki i'm not maybe i shouldn't worry about it because it's short term three month number as you can see here uh pretty good third best in the field behind only the top two of course um but this is the the, the list uh guys like billy horschel been playing very consistently as of late just you know he's a guy i i'm looking at like sam burns i'm looking at that are playing well Probably starting too far back to win this thing, but in the without starting strokes market, I think there's some good value on some of those guys at the bottom of the list. Because remember this, Andy, unlike any other tour event, these guys start off eight, nine, ten shots behind. They have to play aggressive. They have no other choice. If they want to try to win, they got to go out. They got to make birdies. So I'm really kind of paying attention to what these first round scores are going to be when they come out because you mentioned the par is different this year. But those guys at the bottom really have to go out and try to play aggressive. It could backfire and it could make several bogeys and not play well. But, you know, who's been playing well and who's going to have to try to be, uh, you know, put their foot on the pedal is kind of what I'm looking at this week. And one note here on the best odds section of this graphic you're looking at, you can see some very, very big numbers. Billy Horschel, 350 to 1 on FanDuel. Again, that is with starting strokes. Those numbers will not be like that in the without starting strokes market. So, again, just make sure you pay attention to the markets you are choosing this week. But that's your top 10. Here's the history of with starting strokes. It's only been, this is the sixth year, I believe now, Andy. The farthest anybody has come back was Rory at four under. He started in the seventh position. So keep that in mind for the uh, winner with starting strokes this week. Yeah, we're going to go through our players that could trip you up, uh, some DraftKings darlings outright and finishing position. And at the end, we'll kind of go through some of the other guys that we haven't talked about. Um, but to your point, Nick, in the last three months, Keegan Bradley, out of 30 guys, is 21st in total strokes gained last week. <laughs> and that's with last week. <laughs> <laughs> with last week, yes. Yes, uh, just really, really strange happenings. But I do kind of like the setup. You get hot and you win. It's an emphasis yeah. on winning. And uh, yep. I agree with what Hideki did. I mean, don't we all just kind of have to love Hideki? Doesn't he just meet to the <laughs> – beat of a different drum i mean he just kind of does his <laughs> yes. own thing and um i actually agreed with it 100 percent. if you have back spasms there's nothing good that comes out of it cut bait just cut bait I, I i see this in ufc all the time nick where you have a fighter that's just getting creamed and it's like in between the second and third round and you're just like why would you go out there for this last round you're just going to absorb more damage it's going to take a <laughs> it's going to take time off of your career this is no reason there's no reason to go out there uh, and sure enough, they send him out there and, you know, they get beat up even more. And there was no reason to. So I agree with what Hideki did. 100%. Nothing to lose. Nothing to gain. Why Why push it if you got back spasms? Just move on uh, to next week. So, All right. Let's move to players that can trip you up. I only have one this week because we only got 30 guys. And I got to aim high. So this week, Nick, I think it's Xander Shoffley. I think Xander is going to be the guy. I think Xander's going to be the guy that trips you up. Let me tell just a quick little story. Uh, this as soon as as soon as I was reading about all the changes to East Lake, this story popped up in my head. So there's a little bar and grill right down the street, kind of a dive bar, and they had the most incredible wings. They made them this hot uh, yet sweet. Uh, they would fry them and then they would grill them. It took like 40 minutes to make these wings, and they were fantastic. I would go in every Thursday and get these wings. They got a new chef new cook. The recipe didn't change, but I went in one week and the wings were a little different. Not a lot different, a little different. <laughs> I could taste it. And I was like, why, why are these wings different? Oh, we got it. <laughs> I think I used to go every Thursday because I loved it. I had my routine. I knew what to expect. And ever since those changed, 
I've been there a couple times in the last like six months. I think these greens are going to throw somebody off and Shoffley to be as the prime candidate. This is new grass. This is a new texture. This is a new way to read these greens. They have said they want these greens to be a lot faster. And if Xander loves this place, as you said, his worst finish here is seventh. And that was in 2018. He absolutely loved this place. If you tweak just a couple things and it puts people out of their comfort zone, I think that's the opportunity for some of these guys who are, like you said, are going to play super aggressive. There's no laying up uh, in this tournament. If Xander can't putt as red hot as he has this year on these new greens, where the texture is a little different, I think he's the guy that slides down the leaderboard a little bit. Don't be surprised if he finishes outside the top five. I know it's a big, big roll of the dice, but when I'm looking at these top guys, he's the one that I have circled as a player that I think might disappoint a little bit. Your thoughts? As a guy that has literally won all of my golf money this year on only X, it's hard to stomach that. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree, uh, but I'm scared to follow along with that because I love the guy and he's proven that he can do anything in a given week and he's proven he's more consistent than, than Scheffler week to week, it seems like at this point. Uh, but I hear you. There's definitely merit in what you're saying. I am scared to follow along with that. And I, I love, I, you know, what it comes down to is I really like Xander. So I, I, I don't want to believe that's going to happen. It's like, it's like Tiger. I like Tiger so much. I don't want him to not play well, even though the realization is he's not going to every single week. I don't know about this right. one for sure, but I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I've, again, I've just, he's been the guy I've been <laughs> and with client plays using as, as, as cross board parlays with other things and just cashing the one, the one consistent I've had all year in golf is I cash Xander plays. That's about it. <laughs> so I want to hope we'll hopefully see that continue, but I just want to say, you know, it's been a long season and it's the end of the season when Andy Lang is comparing East Lake golf club and how this tournament is going to play to chicken wings. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But it was, it was a pretty good analogy. Oh, it's hilarious. The kids are the same way. You give them something that's a little different. They're onto it. I can't fool them. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I've I've been cashing Xander top twenty cross sport parlays all season as well. Yep. So th this is yep. this is not something that I <laughs> took lightly. Uh, I I understand how many units uh, Xander has made for uh, for Nick and I and for clients. I mean, we're talking a lot. Um, so yeah. that, that hurts me, uh, to fade him, but I just, when, when, when you're that comfortable with something for that long and something changes, I think there, and you know, it, Nick, these golfers I, routine, routine, true. routine. So now that being said, he could go out and win it. Uh, last time Scotty Scheffler didn't have a great finish. He, he finished 41st. What was at the U S open? I uh, came back and he won the next Ooh. tournament. So I know he, <laughs> right, looked a right. out of, he looked a little out of sorts last week, but again, you know, kind of Scheffler, he was another one like Matsuyama. What like what's what was he gonna <laughs> gain or lose? What was the what was the motivation True. for him to play awesome uh, last True. week? Probably not too much. We'll talk about him a little bit later. All right, let's get into Nick. Uh, let's do a outright winner without starting stroke. So make sure we explain this market one more time. Why? Because it's too important to not understand. And who do you have circled in this category? Yeah, I'm going without starting strokes here because. It lets everybody in the field actually have a chance to uh, to be bettable this week. So this is, uh, you know, <laughs> what's kind of hard about this is you can't look at the leaderboard at any given point in the week and understand really where you sit for this bet because they don't, on the PJTour.com app or whatever, that, that there's going to be no leaderboard that shows without starting strokes. So you're always going to be having to do a little bit of math. Uh, I've done that the last few years. I kind of always keep scratching my head and being frustrated with it. I'm like, wait, is that Xander, I bet him he's up there good. But wait, if I subtract this and carry the Y and add the take my shoes off and add the toes, oh, I'm trailing by five. Okay. So keep this in mind. You will have to do some math to figure out where these guys are at any given point. But without starting strokes, everybody's starting even. All that matters is your 72 hole aggregate score. Uh, and who I like this week is a guy that's been playing red hot in the playoffs. Xander's been very, very good. Sam Burns has been just as good. And a lot of it's because. Of his putter full transparency i haven't bet on burns in a while clearly that's been a mistake uh tie for fifth at fedex st jude tie for second last week he posted that seven under final round i mean he at one point the way that that course firmed up and started playing very difficult on sunday he, he was in the clubhouse that i think it was 11 under I, I remember even the announcers kept talking about man burns in the clubhouse at that number it's it's kind of looking pretty good so kudos to him for getting out there and doing that but he's been playing very very good his putter andy ridiculous right so Last week, he gained 
plus 1.89 strokes gained putting each round. Two weeks ago, plus 1.8. Going back a little further, Burns has gained more than 28 strokes on the field, on the greens, in just his last six starts. That's remarkably hot with the putter. The concern, of course, is the putter is fickle. At any given time, it can just be cold as ice. So that is uh, something that could happen here. But at the same point, the putter is always the great equalizer, and it can keep even a mediocre player um, or ball striker or whatever that week in the mix. I'm hoping his putter can continue. That's really what this is, this is premised on. Uh, the greens are new this year. Burns has been comfortable around Eastlake, though, as well. He's gained nearly 14 strokes putting over the last three years combined here at this golf course. Again, will that hold up or matter because of the new services? I don't know, but it's, I did want at least want to mention it. Uh, and finally, we talked about the situation with the starting strokes. So even though we're betting in the market without starting strokes, the reality is the guys are still playing the tournament with starting strokes. So they have to do something, right? So he's starting six strokes back or, uh, and for everybody else or more. So the strategy is simple. You got to get out there. You got to play aggressive. You got to make up ground. So nobody is better at Burns. If you look at his scorecards from last week, the guy makes birdies in bunches. He also makes a few bogeys because he plays a little aggressive. He ranks number one on tour in birdie conversion. That's hitting the green and actually making the putt when you do hit the green. And then he's number two in birdie average because, again, he's just a little bit more aggressive. He goes after flags, and he's going to have to play this week. So the, the tournament's kind of setting up for him to play into what he normally does, and his putter's been so red hot. I just think I'm, I'm, I believe we're going to see this guy continue to make – birdies and bunches once again this week i'm just hoping that the bogeys are not as uh, fruit fruitful as the birdies are and again without starting strokes i think sam burns can make a pretty good run this week for 72 hole low score so i like sam burns he's 20 to 1 right now in the without starting strokes mark love it yeah he's been absolutely on fire with that with that putter uh number one uh, recently has been Burns putting number two Shoffley. So yeah, you get a hot putter. Great, great time of year to get a hot putter there for Sam Burns. For <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at some DraftKings darlings, only 30 guys in the field. So um, not too, not too easy to come up with a crazy um, lineup. <laughs> By the way, fun, fun fact, Nick, I did my DraftKings darlings uh, last week. And then I looked and the lineup I picked was the most popular lineup on DraftKings. So you're welcome. Uh, I did a, <laughs> it means everybody's listening and following along with you. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Yes. Yes. Everyone's putting in the lineup that I told him to. Uh, all right. DraftKings darlings. Uh, we're going back to him. Taylor Pendrith. He's only 6,500. Uh, Nick, he's finished fifth, fifth, 22nd, 13th in his last four tournaments. That is better than guys that are priced thousands more than him uh, in the last six weeks. This guy's 10th best in total strokes gained. That is better than Bear. That is better than McElroy. That is better than M. Incredible value at 6,500. Up next, we're going to go Sepp Straka. Finished 13th last week, and he's finished 6th here the last two years. That's about as good as upside is going to get when you're around the 6,700 um, mark. So his putting's been bad, but his tee to green's been really, really good. Maybe we get a little bit lucky. That's kind of what we're looking for here around the 6,700 mark. Um, so Sepp Strzok will make the lineup. And then Tommy Fleetwood, I think, is undervalued at 7,600 here. He has two top five finishes in his last three tournaments. Um, that's kind of what you're hoping from Tommy. We know he's not going to win, uh, but maybe we get a top 10, a top five. He finished ninth here last year. And um, at this price, he's uh, he's worth a flyer for sure. So uh, full draft Kings uh, lineup will be available on the uh, free digital download over at wagertalk.com. And Nick, I got to ask you, Taylor Pendrith or Colin Morikawa this week, who you got? Oh, my goodness. Uh, asked me a month ago, I'd say Colin because he was playing very, very steadily. But the problem with Colin is even if he hits a ball great, D to green, he just he's not good on the greens, man. And, and, and to win anything and to bet a guy, because usually his price is obviously top five, right? So if you can't make the putt and you're, in, in you're priced at that, at that point, it just goes to value. So I... I would agree with you that Pedro probably has better value uh, this week. Yeah, but, Sorry, Kyle. Morikawa is ninety one. Yeah, Morikawa is ninety one hundred. Taylor Pendrith is sixty five hundred. Like, it's, yeah, you know, it's, I don't see enough separation really, there. No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, I just thought that one was was kind of interesting here. So, all right, let's take a look at a top twenty uh, finishing mm -hmm. position. Uh, Nick, who do you have for us? Uh, so this one's actually going with top 10 this week because the 20 market is obviously top very 10. You're right. Pri price. Well, it's priced so high, you know, low or high, whatever you want to describe it with, with only 30 players in the field. So 
I went with Adam Scott this week. I'll explain it, but I, uh, full transparency, I, I, I'm between him and Billy Horschel. I was back and forth, and, and Billy Horschel presents a pretty good number for value this week. He's over three to one, but he starts at one under. Adam Scott is at plus one eighty to finish top ten, uh, but he starts at three under, so he starts two strokes up. And I went with him for this segment. And for right now, the the leaderboard markets that are out there uh, do include starting strokes. And this particular one, because they all offer them now, including ties. So this is Adam Scott, top 10, with starting strokes and including ties, plus 180. Never had to put so many disclaimers on a <laughs> top finish before, but there you go. Uh, Adam Scott, peaking at the right time, red hot, obviously, over his last four starts. Started with a very close call in Scotland. He finished runner-up to, to Robert McIntyre. And that one kind of felt like, where, where did that come from, right? And now he's just been riding it. Uh, he followed that up with the tie for 10 at the Open the following week. He then took a month off, and this is where I'm going to get into the, the concern I have for Scott this week. So he took a month off before the playoffs began. He finished tied for 18th at FedEx St. Jude, and then, of course, almost won again last week, another another joint runner-up finishing behind Keegan Bradley. So if you look at Adam Scott, the guy's 44 years old. He still looks as beautiful as any man could ever look. He still has the prettiest golf swing you know, in the history of the PGA Tour, but he's 44 years old. And if you look at the way he does his schedule, he's doing it facing the fact that he's 44 years old. He's very picky with when he plays, and he's very strategic with how often he's playing back-to-back. So this is a third straight week for him. He has not done that this year. Uh, I didn't go back further. I would, Other than the playoffs, I would say he probably hasn't done this for the last couple of seasons. So that is the concern. Will he be able to continue um, from a just physicality standpoint? I mean, we had a lot of up and down last week. That's the one thing you know, you're not, we're not necessarily talking about, but it wears on you, man. You're walking up those hills. And I, I was at one point, I was like watching the tournament. I'm thinking of the galleries. Like, God, it sucks to just go up and down. Those guys must be dead after they get home. But then the players, you know, they're doing it four days in a row. Now they go to East Lake. It's hot. You know, I don't know. The energy concern is there for me. Aside from that, I really have no concern. His game is showing everything you'd want to see. Um, so I'm very happy with the rest of it. His T degree numbers have been very good. He ranks 11th in this field over the last three months at Tita Green, and he ranks ninth with the putter in the last three months as well. So getting him up into the top 10 and getting plus 180 where he's falling kind of in the strokes gain data makes some sense. Over his last five starts, Scott has gained nearly 16 strokes with his putter. So just another guy that's just rolling the, the putter very, very well. So again, aside from his age and this being his third straight start, I can't see any other reason he won't contend again this week. So I'm going to hope he, uh, the physio, you know, that's helping him or whatever is going to do everything they can to get his body ready. Uh, but assuming that will be a factor this week, I think he can contend. I think we can get a top 10 out of him. Plus 180, I think is pretty good, including ties, remember. Yeah, absolutely. I was I was laughing last week when he was when he went real low. And remember, he was, he was like the only guy that played at that course like 20 years ago or something. You yeah, remember? correct. Yeah, we I was, did talk I was talking about that. I was like, course history. There you go. He's familiar with he's familiar with the course. He's going out low. Uh, so that was a that was a wild one. So uh, real quick before we get going, I want to go through some of these guys. Last tournament of the year. Let's uh, talk a little bit about. It. By the way, uh, there's only four golfers in the field that have finished inside the top ten. Three out of the last four tournaments they've played in. Scheffler and Shoffley. Uh, those are the easy ones. Uh, but uh, Billy Horschel is is one of them, and uh, so is Adam Scott. So if you're looking, that's at why they forms, were my two I struggled with. <laughs> yeah, recent form, it's amazing. Yeah, just the yeah. the wily veterans man coming alive uh, at the right time. So, um, Scheffler, what do you expect? What do you expect? Can he get it home uh, this week? It, it, here's the thing: he's been in this position each of the last two years, right? You think you think he's going to learn? He's going to figure it out. It's if there's ever a year that he's going to close the deal, this has got to be it. So I, I don't know it. You make a great point about last week. Did he really care? I mean, he started off okay, and then he you know, he kind of stumbled a little bit in the second round, and it almost seemed like from there it was just like 72, 73, 75, whatever. Who cares? He wasn't changing his position. So I'm not putting any stock into that. I want to believe his past history from the last two years and losing this twice might. The third time's a charm, isn't that a saying? I think, I think he might close the door this year. I don't want to bet it because there's no value, but I think he might do it. This yeah. Year. Uh, Matsuyama, we, we touched on him. We're not worried about him this week. Uh, Ludwig Aber, yep. I actually threw a little, a uh, little money on, uh, Cantlay over Aber. Um, Cantlay actually played pretty decent. And then every time they cut to Aber, he's making a 60 foot chip, a 50 foot putt. <laughs> um, 
Like he hits it in the water and then hits a miracle shot. Uh, a bear is now the guy that I am not allowed to bet on or against. If I bet on him, uh, he will suck. He will be absolutely terrible. If I bet against him, he will be like a prime time <laughs> tiger. Uh, for, be making uh, those that week. Pots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's just kind of what you get with a young golfer, right? You're just going to get inconsistencies. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of yeah. ups and downs. Um, yeah. First time playing here. Uh, what do you think? What, what, what do we make of a bear? It's, it's hard to trust uh, a first timer. It's hard to trust him. His fourth round scoring average has been horrific this year aside from the masters it's really been downhill since then and they talked about that last week um you know i think the maturity level on when to hit a shot and where to play the shot isn't quite there yet and his his overall short game even though he did you know pull out a couple times and make some long putts overall it's not that good considering or compared to most of the people here's in this field so you gotta sit you got all three of those things kind of add together to say you know Great job getting here in your sophomore season. And I, I, I'm expecting, honestly, a lot of good things from him in years to come. This is probably just a little too early for him to really kind of get in the mix on Sunday, even though he is starting, obviously, at a pretty good point. I think he's, uh, what is he, fifth? So he's starting at 500. It's pretty solid to start, but I just, I don't, I really don't believe that he's going to be able to kind of keep up with the rest of the field this week um, just with those. And if he does, he probably falls backwards on Sunday because that's just proven to be what he's been doing this year. Um, McElroy or Cantlay show you anything that makes you want to think they have any, any, any signs of life this week? Do they have a pulse? I, McElroy, it's so hard. The guy's won three of these things because he comes here and he did win from four under before. So, but last week, I mean, I'm seeing nothing from him. I mean, I guess he finished five under, posted a couple whatever rounds. It was even on TV. I don't remember even watching him. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? He really, he really wasn't even there, so I don't know. Not Rory, I'm going to say no, just purely because of the price. Cantley, you know what's crazy about Cantley is as I'm doing the strokes gain graphics, he keeps uh, like every time I'm like, I'm expecting him to drop down because we're not talking about him yet. He's still there in the top four or five. And actually, if you go back and look at his five most recent starts, he had he just simply hasn't been playing a lot. I think that's why we're kind of not talking about him. Since the U.S. Open, he's played five times. I mean, all of them were top 25s. His worst finish was the top 25s. He had two top 10s, two other top 13s. So he's actually playing pretty consistent. He's just not making any real noise, and he's not playing enough. So he's, he's been forgotten about. So I kind of don't have a great beat on him because I simply don't know either. Um, he is a past winner, FedEx Cup winner. I wouldn't want to bet him because he is, like what you said, Obear was to you, Cantley is has been my dark or my what is it my kryptonite for five years tonight i cannot get it right or wrong so i will not be betting him but i really don't have a good read on him. yeah I, I i thought he played pretty good um last week i was following him because i had a little 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 money on him and i was like you know i okay. can't really knock him he, he, he played pretty decent a couple dumb moves um he had, he had a water ball uh what was it on 17 i think in the final round that really derailed him he finished 13th uh, yeah. but if that one hits the green, uh, he ends up with a really, really good finish. So, uh, Victor Hovland, uh, year to forget for Hovland. <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like, um, this is a guy I don't trust moving forward. I, I mean, like for the next couple of years, I, I, this is, if, if I got one guy that I'm kind of looking at in this big one, then I'm like, ah, uh, this guy's play around the green has been absolutely atrocious. It's been up and down, but mostly down. And I haven't seen anything that makes me want to believe that he's got the, I don't want to say the IQ, but just the mentality to try and fix it. So I'm completely out on Hovland. I agree. Uh, if you look at his numbers from last year, like the thing about Hovland, you kind of compare him to Morikawa. Like he's, his ball striking is generally pretty good. And if you go back to his win last year, he was incredible with his irons uh, from basically leading up from the Open Championship through the Tour Championship. I mean, he was gaining at worst a stroke and a half per round on the field just with his irons. His tee ball was great. But his putting in the BMW and Tour Championship last year, I'm looking at it right now, plus 1.83 strokes gained BMW, plus 1.13 strokes gained Tour Championship. Since then, he's gained strokes on the greens for seven times all year, and only once was it more than one stroke. And then his, his, his around the green game, Ugh, I mean, that is even worse than his potting. And there's on the PGA Tour this year, two times as he gained strokes around the green. Two times, Andy. And at those two tournaments last year, he was, he was uh, 
plus 0.45 strokes gain around the green in the Tour Championship and just even at the BMW Championship. So if he can just avoid losing strokes, maybe, but everything worked out for him. He kept his ball striking up. His short game modes were not there, and his putting was lights out. So it took a lot of things for him to win that last year, and there is nothing right now that shows that the putting or the short game uh, are going to be there to do that again this year. So I, I, I can't trust him. Uh, and just finally, the the enigma. I think this guy has had the strangest golf season, uh, and that's Wyndham Clark. Uh, Wyndham Clark has he has a win at Pebble Beach, second at the Arnold Palmer, tied second at the Players, third at the RBC Heritage, uh, ninth at the Travelers, tenth at the Genesis, seventh at the St Jude, and yet at the Majors. Miscut at the Masters, miscut at the PGA Championship, 56th at the U.S. Open, miscut at the Open Championship, and wow. then the 14th at the Olympics. What a, <laughs> I mean, what a just absolutely bizarre, uh, like when, when the when the stage was at its highest, he melted outside of the Olympics. Other than that, really good golfer, top 15, <laughs> top 15 golfer. Uh, so I don't know. What are your thoughts on Wyndham Clark? I find him pretty tough to bet. He is. He's very up and down. Uh, I, I would safely say if the Pebble Beach Pro Am doesn't get cut to 54 holes, he probably doesn't have a win this year. Uh, it might, you know, he's probably in a completely different position uh, or talked about differently than he was. Then he had that back to back runner up finished with, with Scotty. So you're like, all right, maybe this is the next best golfer in the world right now, right? And then, as you said, uh, from there, it was just cut, cut, 31st, 47th, cut, cut, third, <laughs> cut, 56th. <laughs> Like it just made no sense. Uh, his strength is his length. So, you know, the rest of his game is okay. And he can rely on him getting, you know, that distance off the tee to help him quite a bit. That's what it's going to come down to. But there's no reason to think that he's going to dethrone any of the guys that have been doing it week in and week out. It's just too inconsistent to bet. Yeah, him shooting 60 in that third round of the Pebble Beach pro M is one of the most yeah. amazing, insane rounds of the year. It, it, it Remember, truly is. It, it, Andy, remember the uh, remember what I just said was uh, Hoplin's best putting performances last year was the plus one point eight and plus one point the AT and T Pebble Beach Pro Am for Wyndham Clark plus three point five nine strokes gained putting per round. The guy gained eleven and a half strokes gained putting in three rounds to win that thing, and still uh, and didn't oh, win please. like huge. <laughs> yeah, but one one good. The rest of the guys were after uh, to go out. I don't think I've seen game. a putting performance of plus three point five nine in a tournament before. I honestly don't. That's pretty crazy. amazing. Pretty amazing. So, all right, guys, that again is, that's going to do it for us. Nick, tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com this week. Yeah, we got the uh, tour championship uh, tournament pack up and available on my page at Wager Talk. So you can grab that uh, right now. And then we have the uh, Premier League full season package still available. Uh, you can get that on my page at Wager Talk. Been two weeks into the season, so you haven't missed much. But man, six and one start, 21 units gained already. So couldn't ask for a better start there. And we have the uh, final third of the MLS season plus playoffs as that has returned. So you can check out a uh, 30 day package for $99 for all MLS plays as well as on my page. And that's what's going on uh, right now. Love it. I've got a uh, college football team total that is up. We were 13 and four last year in those uh, number one winning percentage, number one in ROI in college football. We only did one play a week. That was all I needed to go 13 and four in the college football season. So U S open plays, we're off and running. We're up a uh, plus 139 units, uh, all sports. So we're having the absolute dream year. Encourage everyone to check out all the plays at wt.buzz slash al and jump on board at college football play. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Been a great season, and uh, we will be doing golf content throughout the fall. I know it's big football season, but uh, Nick and I are diehardos, man. Uh, so uh, for all you for all you fellow golf diehardos that know how much value there is in betting golf throughout the year, uh, we'll be here for you. So hope to join us. Don't forget to like button, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel. Good luck on your plays, and we will see everyone next episode on Tea Time.